Hi everyone, so sorry for being late. I had a problem with the internet here, I think. I'm not sure what's going on, but it will not go live. Just kept saying going live and it's not happening. So sorry about that, I'm 10 minutes late. Um, however, uh, our topic today is getting the most of your horses in the winter. Um, we all experience the difficulty in the winter, um, the, how much rain and wind and mud, and we all can keep going all the time about it and uh, keep finding basically excuses to not to train our horses. And uh, there is so many negative things about winter, but I personally love it and I love the preparation for it. And I uh, find it's actually a, a perfect time to find important things to do with our horses that we don't have time for them in the rest of the, the rest of the year. We'd be too busy doing other things, more uh, action, more uh, we take our horses out and we're busy doing other things. I use the winter for so many important areas that we sometimes uh, leave and we don't touch, such as a lot of preparation, uh, things that need doing and I don't do, uh, such as simple things like standing still when you're riding your horse. You don't do it enough because you're too busy uh, trying to improve your horse with the exercises that you're working on particular. You're trying to reach your goal, which I do understand. So. Take advantage of bad weather to work on those things that need working that we don't do enough. Now, uh, I have um, always spoken about, uh, uh, which I call an enemy. Enemy is the, to any person, to myself, and that's enemy. Nobody can get rid of it forever. You can learn to live with it in a better way. So, um, and this enemy, it's the laziness. We all ha have this laziness that's we uh, just feeling lazy and not doing it. We don't want to start. But when we start, we don't understand why actually I don't do it every day. Why I don't train my horse every day like that. So, is the question is, who will win? You or the enemy? and how long he will win for, how many times, how many days he win, how many days you win, and all that. So I find techniques to uh, ignore that enemy of laziness, that mind that's keep telling me, don't do it, oh, it's raining, it's windy, uh, the horse wouldn't enjoy it, you wouldn't enjoy it, whatever it is, it's maybe dangerous, all that. I always take myself to a different thing. Let's do this and that. I just start. When you start, that's it. You're already there. Now, I would uh, like to suggest a few things um, for you to do with your horses uh, during the winter, areas that maybe you don't do enough uh, in the rest of the year, such as uh, training inside the stable. If you have a stable, if your horse doesn't live out all the time, it's a perfect opportunity to get more close to your horse. Uh, teach the horse to follow you inside the stable. Teach the horse to trust you and respect you. Be with him much more for a longer time inside the stable. One, doing nothing. Two, asking him to follow you. Three, working on areas on his body that you don't have enough time normally to do because you're too busy riding. Such as checking where is my horse, where my horse, is there an area that's my horse more sensitive? Uh, is he more sensitive on his legs? Maybe around his tail, maybe around the ears, maybe uh, any bad sensitive area that say can improve. Get this sensitivity out just by repeating of rubbing, repeating of anything you can with any material you're holding and robbing the horse. That one thing, I spend time. You know, a lot of the times, we don't know how good our horse is with the tail. Tail, it's an important area. Tail, it tells me about the horse confidence, about how 
good my horse if something will touch him how high his confident is if you want to check your horse just go towards the tail rub the tail a little bit try and put your hand under the tail see the horse reaction something that some people don't do i know you groom the horse in that but do you actually put your your hand right under the tail keep your hand like that check how confident your horse with it take this tail right up See how confident he is still with it. Does he go against you? Does he go soft and, and calm? Some horses do. Some Most horses actually have a bit of a problem about it. And that's something you can improve and work on it you, during the winter to, to, to take advantage of this time. Now, another area is in riding that we don't do enough, such as uh, do collection and do a little bit of flexing the head left and right in standing still, uh, improve your walk, improve the things that even if the area is muddy and wet and I don't know what kind of arena you have or maybe just a grass. So things that uh, uh, the weather limits you, work on those kind of things if you do riding. Improve the way you get on on your horse. Many of us, when you get on the horse, he doesn't stand still enough. How about working on the mountain, improving your park and ride, improve the way he stands still when you get on, improve the way he stays in standing still while you're already on. Im improve all these kind of areas that you don't normally don't work on or you don't do enough work on. I suggest you also to think about areas like the dominant, if you have, uh, if your horse is dominant at all with anything to do with rugs or anything to do with equipment, anything with tacking up, anything with just coming into the stable, take advantage of this time. A lot of horses, when you first come into the stable, they put their ears back. It doesn't mean they hate you. It doesn't mean a lot. It just mean this horse is more dominant. And he explained explaining to you, this is my area, and when you come in, make sure you keep me happy. And when I say go out, basically you need to go out, something like that. So every horse is different. So if you have a horse that dominant, first of all, work on changing his expectation of why you actually come into his table. It's raining outside, take advantage of it. Keep coming to his table and do nothing, rub and leave. Keep coming to his table and just... Uh, feed him and leave. If his ear is back, an example, stay there. When the ear is forward, leave. Keep repeating that until the horse changing his, his expectation of why human coming to his table. That's one area that's important to try and make this dominant weaker. Ragging, bring that rug. If your horse hates rugs, so many horses can develop hate to the rugs. And uh, it's very easy to happen with any horse, any trainer, anybody. To improve that, this area, you can only improve it by repeating with changing the expectation. And maybe apply a bit of pressure explaining when your ears are nicer, when you're behaving nice, I only rub and leave with this rub. I might actually come with the rub, with the uh, rug, rob you, give you something to eat, maybe a carrot, and I leave, and I keep repeat. So a rug become something that they may be looking forward to see. It doesn't mean it's anything going to happen. To happen. And a lot of the times they create and develop this hate, not because they hate the rug. When the rug is on, the story ends. Uh, they develop this because of the way people try and force the uh, the rug on. It's enough few times, two or three times, any of the grooms, any of the people who put the rugs on, uh, the horse is scared of it or say, no, I'm not sure about it or anything like that. And then they force the horse with it and that's it. The horse create rug and human together means force, means something I don't like. So take advantage of the winter. Repeat those things with, uh, with as many people possible as well. The more different people, the better, the more you go in to get rid of these dominant thinking and bad 
thinking about equipment or rugs, etc. With equipment is a little bit more difficult because they actually get exercised with the saddle, they get exercised with the bridle, but you still can do some psychology balance, they call it, so you balance the expectation. You put in the bridle on, but you're not training the horse. You're taking the bridle off and you leave. You put the bridle on, you keep it on for five, ten minutes, you rub the horse, you feed the horse, you take it and, and you go. Saddle the same. So this is called psychology balance, changing the expectation of what equipment is. It doesn't mean they have to be rhythm. Um, simple things to take care of your horses. Um, a lot of the times you need to bandage the horse. Something happened to the horse and he's not very good with it. Use these, these time, bandage the horse when you don't actually need to. For any reason, you're just practicing, improving your skill, improving your horse expectation about it. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't need to hurt itself to have a bandage on. He doesn't need uh, to have to come to the time when he. You need to give him a warmer example, so you can just practice the warmer. Bring any kind of. Uh, a warmer that you put maybe something sweet inside it or put nothing in it. Just come with it, rub the horse, open the mouth and don't actually give the horse uh, and leave or give him a treat, rub. Changing the expectation. Same subject is all about psychology balance. Make your horse happier with seeing you as a human and seeing things that they always developed uh, stress and kind of uh, they have to give it to me. I don't know where to go with my head. They try head up, head down, and some of them just, okay, some of them be fine with it, but the, those horses that panic about wormer, things like that, it's the right opportunity for it. Um, so I have mentioned, I think, all the uh, areas I wanted. I might move just now to the, uh, to the questions that I have written here from people. We have only three questions today. So um, one person asking, is it safe to ride in the dark? Um, actually, I will go, I, first I will say my experience, even as a child. I have, I, I had so many accidents in the past with horses and I don't remember even one that happened to me at night, it happened to me when it's dark. It doesn't mean a lot, but my own experience, I didn't have a problem with it. My experience with horses, uh, a big, huge percent are calmer at night, unless it's very windy and something going on and there is light interfering and things like that. But it doesn't mean you need to take your horse in the dark and go to a new area or ride your horse for a hack when it's dark, when you never did it before. If you never did something like that, you don't know your horse reaction, please make sure you go after you actually, uh, your horse uh, is calm and happy. Make sure your horse, uh, somebody go with your horse. If you have another horse that's very calm, know the area has done it before it's much safer for you. If you know the track and you know the track is clear and fine, it's fine. I personally, I do ride when in the dark. I try to avoid it as I'm getting older, but I used to ride a lot in the dark and I never had um, any problem with it. So it's quite safe as long as you, you, take, um, you take care of the important things such as just don't go and ride when you had never did it before, take make sure you take care of yourself and your horse. Take somebody with experience that has done it before. The second question: What should you be doing during the week with a fit and healthy, stabled horse over the winter to make sure the horse are getting uh, getting a good workout? For, uh, for a good, healthy mind. So, uh, nice question. Basically, is a lot of people think if the horse is stable, there is a lot of energy. It's, it's right, but it's not just about taking this energy out by lunging the horse 
and letting him running around is about that and other things. So if my horse is like, if my horse is stable and his health allows me to do a particular exercises such as control the back end inside this table before I take him out on both sides, uh, take him out of the stable, bring him back into the stable, do all these kind of things a few times. This allows me and gives me the ability to check how well this horse is listening to me, how good he's respecting me, how good he's listening to me. It's give me an idea which mood this horse is, is in at the moment. And those actually exercises work much more than lunging the horse to make them karma, listening to you, respecting you, the whole way you're going to lead them for this. So I would actually start in the stable if I'm concerned about this horse, how he's going to behave when I lead. So I will start inside the stable, um, asking him to move the back end both sides for three times, getting him out of the stable, back to the stable. I'll do that a few times until I make sure I'm going to have control. And as soon as I start walking, I might go up and down, changing directions. The more I keep this horse looking at me, listening to me as a leader, the safer he will be, the safer I will be during that leading wherever I'm going. Now, these kind of things keep in the mind more listening to the leader. Now, if you could, if you, if you can, leave, uh, let this horse free anywhere, even for a 15 minute after you do that, I would like to do it after so he doesn't go absolutely mad and changing the, uh, the time and that's you going to take him. So it doesn't mean as soon as you reach a particular area, you're going to let him loose. You might reach this, reach this area today and he's not going to be loose. But for the important of it, that you go to an area and you let him loose so he knows he's, he had his freedom. He hasn't been just inside the stable all the time. Horses need to know they can be free and run. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of them, in the, especially in the winter, they just, after five minutes, you find them standing on the gate for many reasons. One of them, probably not a lot of grass and all that, but just for the mind to be happy and healthy, they need that freedom, freedom of being loose, if you can. If you can't, just uh, stick to the exercises um, uh, before you take him out anytime and do a little bit of leading, a little bit of lunging, whatever you can inside an arena, a little bit of riding. It's not about how much you do. It's about how the horse is listening to you and what kind of preparation you do for it. We have one last question, a person asking, what can we do with uh, if we have a windy day? This answer very similar to the dark area. So, but uh, my experience with windy days are a little bit different than dark days. So um, uh, we all experience the wind. Wind can be dangerous, but the more you do preparation for it in advance, such as you know we're coming into a windy season, you know, um, an example, in September, you already begin preparing your horse for the next season, for the winter, and uh, in October, you work on it harder, and you are much more prepared, the more you're going to have a calmer and nicer winter. Now, preparation for wind, I like to work a lot with things who, uh, with things that make in uh, rustling noise, such as uh, flags, plastic bags, tarpaulin. All those things are important uh, to make the windy days safer and calmer for you and your horse, and much more relaxed. And you see a huge difference. Uh, so if I'm, if I, if it's a, if it's a windy day, and it's a horse that I know I have been preparing and I have been training. And I have prepared them just a, a few a day before that windy day or two days before that windy day. And I have prepared them uh, the season before that. It means I'm happy to ride them. But if not, I normally leave it until 
the wind comes down and I try to prepare this horse for the next windy day. So it's all about working, not for today, not for getting the results for this session, working for tomorrow, working and building and preparing your horse for the next time you ride him. This is what horse we should be talking about, basically. Uh, work on each thing separately. It's a one important thing. Also, preparing your horse for the next ride. Now, uh, in in the uh, wind as well, make sure, again, like the first horse we spoke about in the dark, if it's a windy day, you never rode outside in a windy day. I suggest, I personally wouldn't do it. I'll do anything else with my horse within the areas that I have experience with, in the stable, leading, anything where keeping me safe, but not while it's windy, with a horse that say never rode outside or I never rode inside the arena in a windy day, I would leave it because this horse would need preparation within the next karma when it's not windy and uh, try and prepare your horse. Um, I will be actually uploading a, a video on uh, YouTube and of course on our member area uh, I, because I mentioned the tarpaulin. So how to prepare the horse uh, our horses for tarpaulin. What can I do? I, I will uh, show 10 things to do with the tarpaulin. Tarpaulin is a one equipment uh, that I, I will always keep in mind. I always train my horses and try to train uh, as many horses with it as it makes a difference. And you can do so many things with the tarpaulin. It's such a cheap, simple equipment that anybody can buy and have and train your horse and change the way your horse think of noises, change the way of the horse think about even going inside water, change the way uh, the horse listen to you when he's concerned about something. You'll send him to go through or you wanna ride through something and he will listen to you. So you improve basically the respect, the trust and the relationship using these kind of uh, uh, obstacles. Obstacles do improve the way our horses listen to us, respect us, and trust us. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I wish you all uh, a great evening and a perfect and a nice uh, holiday for all of you. And I will see you in my next live video, and I will see you soon. Thank you so much, guys. Enjoy the rest of the night.